Good evening. I'm Red Pagan Nicole, and this is a special report of the ongoing injustice and harassment campaign against a mother of two in Placer County, California. Red Pagan Corner brought you the story of a 54-year-old woman who beat the odds and survived 30 years of substance abuse to become a drug and alcohol counselor in order to support her young daughter while also bringing a bit of humanity and compassion to a job she loved. But that was cut short one day in July of 2023 when she was wrongfully terminated from her position at Granite Wellness Center, who has engaged in a year-long plus harassment and character assassination campaign with Placer County against herself and her family. But this isn't just the story of an injustice against a single mother of two trying to raise her youngest daughter and who has been screwed over by a fascist cabal of scrupulous individuals. Now, this story is deeply personal to both myself and this network. You might be wondering who and where the other daughter is. Well, she is fully grown and maintains a leftist news organization. This one, as a matter of fact. That's right. That daughter is me. And this is the story of my mother, who for the sake of anonymity is referred to simply as Mama Red Pagan. We sat down with Mama Red Pagan for an interview, and this was her testimony. So, started off, I got a call one night at work from the tea house resident, who had just graduated in the program and gone over there, and crying, you know, but whining and crying and begging for me to come and give them a ride they got stranded in Roseville and couldn't get back. They were going to get kicked out if they didn't get back by a certain, you know, in by yeah. 10 o'clock. So it was almost the end of my shift, so I left. I went and got them. And then we just chit-chatted on the way back. Got them close to the tea houses and told them, you know, sneak, go to your room. Don't come out except to use the bathroom and try not to talk to it anybody. And call the tea house people tomorrow and tell them that you screwed up. You know, this is what you need. Well, they didn't call the next day and tell them. They got discovered and kicked and was getting, were both getting kicked out. And the next thing I know, I'm getting a phone call from Eric while they investigate some allegations and what the, what basically that I was bringing drugs and alcohol or that at that point it was I was bringing alcohol into clients so that's a bunch of shit you got 20 you know you all got 20 some odd new cameras around that place if I had come in with anything you would have seen it And, uh, so I stayed off for a few days. I went down, they had me come down, sign a paper, and then they wanted to urine test me. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to be positive for marijuana. I've been right. smoking a little bit at night before, you know, to go to sleep. It's the only time I smoke it. We went to the bathroom. I finally got to, was able to pee, and the... Administrator, female administrative staff said, turn, takes the bottle and flips it away from me so that I can't see the label and then walks into the other room, turns the bottle around so it's facing the other administrative staff, but I can't see it. So she's positive for this and this and that I'm positive for methamphetamines and amphetamines. <laughs> and I said, bullshit. That's a bunch of crap. There's no way. I know what I've done and haven't done. And I didn't do that. I would remember doing that. It was just absurd. But when they tried to tell me I was positive for drugs, it, you know, I started putting little pieces together that, you know, somebody said something about, to me at one point about Auburn closing down. And knowing things about that company that I know, I know that they cut corners. I know that they have bare minimum, that they keep bare minimum staff so they don't have to pay 
for extra employees, they were charging the counties for certain client services that the clients weren't getting, having the clients sign rosters for groups that we weren't doing. Um, and they're charging the county for all this on top of, a, you know, the fee for the beds. And they're supposed to have... Yeah, signing a off certain, for... Like three, at least three educational groups a day. And, and they're, they weren't hardly big. They were doing an opening group and a closing group, and that was about it. The rest of the day, we had a, like, four counselors, I think, for 40-some-odd clients, which I guess isn't too bad, but it's trying to overwhelming. spend an hour a week with each client, plus handle all their crises, plus get your paperwork done, there, and then working, the, and then getting pulled off of everything all the time to work the front desk, which isn't even your job. Yeah, it's supposed to be a support staff. Paying the low minimum wage. Which is illegal. Shipping people out of their overtime. I mean, they, there's there was a court case. There's public records now that shows that Granite Walnut did all this to their with their employees. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, it kind of started clicking that hey, they're trying to get rid of everybody so they can shut the place down. Within six months of them firing me because they investigated and found the all that crap to be true, which is bullshit. Everything that the girl, the, they had to girl write a letter. Everything that she said in that letter was like the opposite of what happened. And furthermore, why would they take the word of a of a junkie. drug addict who an active drug addict who just got kicked out for methamphetamines and is trying to point fingers at other people over somebody who's worked with, for them for three fucking years and has never really had a problem you know they've never had any serious problems with yeah but you know the count it would started it, the whole reason they fired me pretty much I think was because this girl had gone to her county worker first. Placer County wanted somebody to blame for all that. So they chose me. Within six months of me getting fired, everybody else was canned. Except for three employees. And then didn't also the administrator, uh, the, uh, all uh, of the, Eric? Most Eric, you know, Eric, who was there for the first meeting I had with him. He's not working for them anymore and moved out of state. Uh, the female administrative staff, she went to another company, but went to a different company. And pretty much everybody that I knew is gone somewhere else because the politics in that company and the shady, shysty stuff that they do was just, it has just been too much. My very first client passed away. He basically he killed himself a year after they kicked him out because I didn't, couldn't get the paperwork done to get his funding. And that was all because of the fact that they kept and they wanted you guys me off. to come in on my day off and kick this kid out. I said absolutely not. <laughs> And then let's not even forget the amount of times that they would pull you off of, like, you know, Every, your only days yeah, off. they'd pull me, you know, had some reason why they, I had to come in. They never once showed me any proof that I tested positive. I had asked them to send that sample to the lab. Which I believe by law they're supposed yes, to do. Yes, they are, especially if they're going to fire you. Yeah. I never got any. I never saw or heard anything more from that company as to whether or not. And then I was collect. I went and collected unemployment. And at the after I collected all my unemployment, the company decided to uh, argue about it. And that they shouldn't have to pay it. Pay into that because I was a 
I was a change of care client, which I was no danger. Yeah, there was there was no danger. Like <laughs> dangerous is some over aggressive employees trying to uh, force people to do things they don't they aren't comfortable doing or talking about things that they aren't comfortable talking or about or things that just aren't legal. The company has, everybody I've talked to says the same thing, it, that it's corrupt, that they're doing, charging a ton, you know, a lot of money to the county for stuff that's not getting done. Uh, there's been at least two or three, two I know of for sure, and possibly three uh, lawsuits against them by employees who got tired of the crap and tired of being treated like crap and not having any backup like a client could come and totally get in your face threaten to do bodily harm to you and you cannot even restrain them I don't care I would have been yeah like you are entitled to defend yourself I am I don't care whose employee I am personal rights come first. And they violated a lot of uh, rights, you know, a lot of the clients' rights, too. Uh, numerous times. But that's a whole other story. My biggest problem is the way they treated their employees and collecting money for things that they weren't giving us the op even the time to do. Telling us we have to do this and this and this, but then pulling us out of, I've been pulled out of a group before for, to handle a crisis or to handle something else, and they tell us, they would say that they're going to have somebody else come and sit with my class, and then, never and then would. nobody ever came back, so the clients just wandered off. You know, clients that, you know, really should be supervised at all times. Right. And then, and then it's like you said some about like even the shady shit that they did to the clients themselves. Like yeah, they, I mean, they single people out all the time. They would single people out, and they pick on the ones that stood up for themselves. Seems to be a pattern. Yeah, they came in. If you stand up for yourself, they're gonna smack you down. Or say that you're creating a problem or creating too much drama for the other client. So or that you're danger to the other client. Or that you're just not in compliance yeah. with something. Yeah. So I, I don't think I was in compliance the whole time I worked there. <laughs> but then again, from the sounds of it, neither was anybody else technically. So, there was a couple of counselors who were, but they'd spend 15 minutes with their clients, write an hour's worth of notes, and, and then, then work on their documentation. They, they would be up to date with their documentation, but they were taking time from what they were supposed to be doing with the talking with the clients, with the clients. So, and I got all kind. I had all kinds of clients complain about it, even after I wasn't a counselor anymore. They just burnt me out so bad. I don't ever want to be in that setting again. As much as I love to help people, I just can't do it. During Mama Red Pagan's testimony and throughout the investigation against her prior to her termination, the reasoning behind her firing seemed to change frequently on the part of Granite. The drug test in which she took was flipped away from her so that no one else could see it and could have been planted with God only knows what or switched with a dirty test, to which they have never shown proof of, which they are bound to by law to disclose, especially if it's in the instance of termination. And if one suspects their employee of potentially being a statistic of the very thing that they are trying to treat, would it not make more sense to put them on leave and try to get them the help that they deserve rather than just throwing them under the bus and discarding them? It would appear that given the lack of caring or for following proper protocols and intentionally keeping a reduced staff to cut costs, putting more pressure on remaining employees, all of whom knew too much and 
those that didn't tote their particular line were easy scapegoats to be disposed of, and charging the counties for services and treatment that their clients were not receiving. With the house of cards following around them, they sought any and every opportunity to get rid of those people, using the word of an addict who has a history of compulsive lying, who went to the county and the county got involved, and both them and Granite then looked for someone to blame. Mama Red Pagan is a good-hearted person whose value, who values human kindness and decency over the profit and tries to help others beat the odds and overcome their addictions like she did. That, in and of itself, made her a target. This conflicted with the fascist policies of Granite Wellness Centers. She was given no prior warning to her termination, not a verbal or written final warning. No paper trail can be found to back up Granite's claims, even though they claim that they did in the termination paperwork. She was simply deemed a liability to the institution for the crime of knowing too much. When she was fired, she was deemed a threat to the company, going so far as to prohibit others still working for them from having contact with her, despite the fact that Mama Red Pagan being a, was a ride for some of them to and from work. Michelle was one of those people terminated who needed a ride and was also known to be a human being with compassion and understanding towards others. The excuse they used for firing her? Falling asleep on the job despite no evidence to support this claim. Red Peg Network did attempt to reach out to Michelle, but she declined comment. And if it seems like they couldn't stoop any lower, Granite Wellness Center has further gone out of their way to, by making it harder for Mama Red Pagan to get a job anywhere else in Placer County, seemingly working with them to blackball her and trying to prevent her from getting unemployment, because they do not believe that they should have to pay. It has now gone so far as to get the state of California involved to determine if she is quote-unquote eligible or not, a hearing being scheduled sometime in the near future. How could a group of people be so malicious that they would prevent a person from getting another job, trying to prevent them from getting any sort of unemployment benefits in the meantime, at a time when people are already struggling and having families to support? One would have to be a special type of evil and conniving and have a contempt for poor people enough that they would even consider taking such actions. If that isn't enough, it would appear that Placer County has gone one step further in trying to make Mama Red Pagan another statistic by coming after her partner, a black indigenous man, accusing him of being inappropriate with my sister, who herself is indigenous. While taking no care to contact the family about the allegations or even looking into the family's background, I make no secret that I'm employed as a security guard. My grandmother worked with mentally ill criminals in the California State Hospital system. Instead of doing any sort of investigation into the family or even consulting us about such heinous allegations, Placer County resorted to immediately involving the corrupt and abusive Child Protective Services, which sells children into abusive homes and is complicit in human trafficking. And the people disproportionately affected by this are black and brown people. This is harassment with racist undertones mixed with modern-day systemic genocide and assimilation tactics that are being used against indigenous peoples and discrimination against former addicts and homeless people. The effects that this has had not only on former employees like Mama Red Pagan, but also former clients has been immeasurable. One client took his own life doing to being, due to being kicked out because of funding paperwork that could not be completed because Granite Wellness Centers kept pulling employees like Mama Red Pagan away to do work normally designated to support staff. Numerous lawsuits have been brought against Granite Wellness Centers by former employees and clients alike who both claim to have had their rights violated, their personal safety disregarded, and experienced a hostile environment at the hands of Granite Administration. I issued a warning to these individuals not long ago in the first video that they should not continue to antagonize Mama Red Pagan or the family, as it would only continue to poke the Red Pagan bear herself. They chose not to listen. So as of this report, I'm making this solemn vow. I will continue to report and expose on the corruption that goes on in Placer County with Granite Wellness Centers and law enforcement and government agencies thereof. 
I will not stop until they either stop harassing my mother and my family, or until they themselves are destroyed along with the reputation of every individual whose name crosses my eyes who is affiliated with them, by any means necessary. Granite Wellness Center denies any and all allegations. Red Pagan Network attempted to reach out to them and Placer County for comment, but our requests were denied. I'm Red Pagan Nicole, and this has been a special report from Red Pagan Network. Until next time. Thank you for watching. If you like news and politics from a leftist perspective, true crime, or informational videos on leftist philosophy and pagan belief practices, and would like to support the channel, please head over to my Patreon page and set up a monthly donation. Even a few bucks really helps me out. All links are provided in the description. Like, comment, and subscribe, and share on various social media. Hit the notification bell so that you never miss a video. I put out content regularly, so you will always get quite a bang for your buck.